everyone, Xander's here, and yeah, I haven't had much content out lately. And it's been kind of hectic, you know, it's the holiday season, so things are just... <sighs> right now. But, you know, I decided to go ahead and I'm going to do a kind of a throw-together video, where I'm just going to discuss a couple of nerdy things going on in the world right now as far as fandoms, and things I enjoy, and things I've experienced lately, and, you know, just kind of put it all together in this hodgepodge kind of video, kind of uh, just a nerdy news kind of thing, I guess. I don't know. I don't have a name for uh, this video. I'll have some kind of title vaguely discussing what I'm discussing. You know, you know. There you go. There's your intro. Great A quality. First off, I want to start the video talking about something really cool and positive because we're going to get into some negative here uh, shortly. So on the positive note, the Power of the Daleks uh, had its U.S. screening uh, this past Monday. I went uh, along with my kids and uh, my friend Sammy, and I got to share uh, this what, what is one of my favorite Doctor Who stories with a friend of mine that had never watched it and with my kids. Uh, it was a two and a half hour, roughly two and a half hour experience. It was all six parts put into uh, what was a continuous. Uh, thread there was no breakups for like the intro and outro is like you would normally see on TV or how it will probably be when the DVD releases but you know to see all six parts uh, back to back in one go uh, is definitely something that is going to be hard to do for a lot of people my kids for instance got really antsy and kind of fidgety and it was late and on school nights so they weren't able to pay attention as much as like me and Sammy were so I'm sure they enjoyed it a bit, it's just it's hard for them to do that at their age to sit for that long and move on, you know, an old black and what's you know, a black and white episode of Doctor Who and six long well, six short ones into a two and a half hour block at once. That's a lot to ask. So for that, you know, thanks kids for so you know, sitting through that. Uh, but as for me personally, it was so good to see this story you know get new life and while I will say that the animation style itself isn't great I appreciate it because for the most part it was pretty accurate to the clips that still exist and the stills that still exist so a lot of it was very much like one-to-one -one, I guess you could say uh, the Troughton design in uh, the recreation very much looks like Patrick Troughton. You know, it looked like the second Doctor. It looked like Ben and Polly, though Ben uh, could have used a little work. Uh, it just it looked good for the most part, and I'll talk about that part that little bit in a minute. But uh, the sound design is still so good. It's still the original audio from the original airing. So all the uh, instill music, all the ambient music, all the uh, actual dialogue and sound effects, all of that is directly lifted from the original episode um, episodes and put an uh, animation over it. So I'm still happy that all the audio existed because that still was the story I've experienced before, but I just got to experience it with moving pictures for the most part finally which was kind of the point and it was still just so fun for me to go sit through it because again this is the first second doctor story this was the beginning of a new era for doctor who it was a make or break thing for the series it's that transition from the you know Hartnell era to the Troughton era so it's nice to see that on the big screen it was really cool listening to you know, the Daleks, you know, during their, you know, their chanting, as it were, their rousing in, you know, this big theater. And it was really nice to, you know, I, I like the kind of CG work they're using for uh, the 3D models for Daleks. That really helped them stand out from the animated models for uh, human characters. However, it wasn't perfect by any means. There were some issues. Uh, I personally noticed several times uh, some animation errors so there's this one part for instance where the rebels have one of the Daleks and they're talking about the Dalek uh, 
the Daleks uh, stick that you, they use to uh, fire their uh, beams, their energy weapons, and they have the weapon stick. They you know are talking about putting it on and everything, and they're talking with the Dalek there. They do a cutaway to a close up of one of the characters, and when they cut back, the two ca animated characters are talking, and a split second later, you can see the Dalek pop into existence. Like, they were just a few seconds off having the Dalek on screen when it should have been. And it was really noticeable to me. <laughs> so, it was like the magically, the magic appearing Dalek. That was kind of funny. And then there was another portion where the Doctor and, and company are captured to be put in uh, jail cells. And one of the columnists uh, is standing there. He has his hands up and as he starts moving, his pocket and name patch starts scrolling as he walks by. Like, they forgot to animate, like it's supposed to be moving with him. It scrolled. It was so weird. <laughs> um, you know, there were just instances of stuff like that, or uh, the way they had the bodies animated, they would actually just use like a mirrored image. So like the name tags are over here normally, uh, or, you know, they're supposed to be, you know, on one side normally over here on the uh, uh, left side. Yeah, it would suddenly appear on the right side when they they were turned this way. So it was kind of really not <laughs> too professional in that aspect. Like they were just not paying attention to certain details like that, and there were just minor continuity things. And there are times in it where uh, the animation and stuff doesn't match up with the audio that's going on. And I think that was just one of the limitations of the style they were using. So. Again, it's not perfect, and they could have done better, but that's to be said about anything in general. Anything can be done better. But for what it was, and for bringing a lost story from 50 you know, years ago, and bringing it back, and giving it new life, and allowing people to experience it for the first time that may not have ever experienced it, you know, I appreciate it for what it is, and I will be purchasing it when it does release uh, here in the U.S. in January. It is going to be a Barnes & Noble uh, exclusive, so if you want one, you can go pre-order it there. I don't know if you can do it right now, but within the very near future, you're going to be able to at the very least. And it'll be both in black and white and a color. Uh, variation on the DVDs, so you'll be able to have both a colored and black and white version on the DVD purchase. So, that's great. I enjoyed it. Uh, if I had to rate it, uh, 4 out of 5 for story, the music, uh, the dialogue for the most part, it's 60s Who, so it's not perfect. It still has the stilted moments. There's still some kind of dead air going on, but that was kind of common in that era. And the animation makes it really a bit more obvious since people kind of stand still when there's just nothing going on. Or they just show like a blank wall when nothing's going on, kind of. And you take what you get, but it was still presented very well. It still captured a lot of the atmosphere uh, that even the fan made recreations that I've seen uh, still captured. So if you got the chance to see it, cool. You uh, got to experience it for the first time in the U.S. ever, so that was great since it never aired here originally back in the 60s. So that was the first time it aired here in the U.S. was Monday. So that was a fun experience that I'm glad I got to enjoy with a theater of people that also love Doctor Who. So that was my positive thing for the beginning of this video. So let's get into some negatives. The... Megazord has been officially revealed. The Megazord for the new Power Rangers movie. I didn't like it from the leaked photos. I don't like it. I, I don't like it now that it's been officially revealed. I've watched a couple of videos on YouTube uh, that had the toy out and examining it. Uh, you can go watch uh, like Andre uh, from Black Nerd Comedy. He actually had permission to review the toy. And he's a lot more upbeat about it than I am. And that's cool. You can like it, and that's cool. If you like it, that's cool. But I don't like this thing. It just does not feel like Power Rangers. It doesn't at all. 
it's so gray. It just the prime colors are accents. They're accent colors in this thing. The main colors are pretty much gray. Light gray, dark gray. It's so boring looking in that aspect. It's so generic looking like that. Um, the one thing that has been a common aspect of Power Rangers when it comes to the Zords is that it looks like individual Zords that come together to form the robot. You know, to form the Megazord. You can still pick out what pieces belong to which Zord individually. You know, this is the blue arm and the red arm and this arm. You can tell these names. And here you can tell certain things. Uh, if you look at the center part with uh, you know, the abdomen, you can see that's the yellow uh, Zord. That's the same tooth tiger. And the upper chest area is going to be the uh, T-Rex. And then the head is going to be the pterodactyl. I'm assuming the legs are supposed to be the mastodon. And the feet, I'm assuming, are the Triceratops because they're blue. But even still, the main colors are just accented. There's not a lot of blue on the feet. There's some yellow here, but it's a big thing of gray. And the legs are all gray. I guess there's some black. Uh, the red's nice, but again, it's kind of just accented. The arms are kind of grayish. The head's the most colorful part. And I hate that there's no face. They've all had faces. Every Megazord has had a face in some way. It's had eyes, a kind of nose thing, a mouthpiece or an actual mouth. This just... It looks like a Soundwave fucked a Jaeger from Pacific Rim. That's what it looks like to me, okay? I don't like it. And I... And I don't hate on people that like it. I'm not going to say your taste sucks. I disagree with your taste. Though there are, you're just kind of wrong on certain things. This just doesn't appeal to me. If it appeals to you, good for you. I hope you like the movie, but this isn't helping me. And what's worse about the reveal of the toy is that on the box, on the back, you get to see the individual Zords from the combinable version, I guess. And that has not helped me want to like this movie anymore because the Zord designs, the individual Zord designs, were one of the few things that was willing to try to give the movie some credit on from the teaser posters that showed them. Oh, well, that's out the fucking window now. Here they are. I'm just going to show them on the, on the screen somewhere. I don't know where, so right now you're looking at them, I guess. The T-Rex looks like he has no eyes. The Sabertooth Tiger looks like a reject from Jungle Fury. And apparently, Lionsgate and Saban do not understand what a quadruped is. A quadruped, for those that don't know, means four legs. When the hell have Triceratops and Mastodons ever had six or eight legs? The fuck, how do you screw up a leg count? Four legs, two front, two back. Have you seen the dog? You got the saber to tiger fucking right, it's got four legs. How does the Triceratops have six? How does the Mastodon have, have fucking eight? How'd you fuck that up? What's the sense of design? Are they an alien Mastodon and alien Triceratops? I, just, I don't know with you, Savan and Lionsgate. What the hell are you doing? The pterodactyl looks okay. I'll give them credit for that one. That looks like a pterodactyl in a general sense. It, It's fine. Not great, but fine. The, the Sabertooth Tiger, again, not great by any means either. I can at least tell it's supposed to be a Sabertooth Tiger. But it just looks weirdly poor proportioned. And again, the T-Rex just looks like he has no damn eyes. It's like, it's like solid red flesh looking. I mean, it's not flesh, obviously. It's all metallic, but it just doesn't look right. And maybe it'll look better in the movies. Maybe it'll look better there in the movie. Kind of doubt it, because I'm not fond of the designs now. I've already got no faith in this movie, and this just digs it deeper and deeper into that grave that I'm sure it's going to end up in. You could have tried harder. You could have designed something kind of cool. I mean, if this did not have the Power Rangers franchise attached to it, if these robots did not have Power Rangers written on it, it would be okay. 
I could see it being kind of cool in something else, but it just does not feel like Power Rangers. There are certain things that just say Power Rangers. Can't be stupid writing. That's Power Rangers. Spandex suits. Power Rangers. Colorful, kind of hodgepodge together as awards that make Megazords. That's Power Rangers. You've gotten rid of the spandex, which is fine. The original movie did that too. Though they still look like the suits from the show. So, you know, they look like just upgraded versions. That's it. This is supposed to be updated. I don't like the suits. They just don't feel like Power Rangers. They feel like a team of Iron Man knockoffs. And I've said that before in my original assessment of the teaser trailer that I didn't like. And then, uh, the words just don't look right. And the CG was shit in the original movie, but at least they looked like the animals they were supposed to be representing. They looked like a falcon and a frog and an ape. And when they merged together, you can still tell where the ape was and where the wolf was and where the bear was. You can tell them. It was still actually pretty damn colorful. It looked like shit. But that was early CG. There was only so much you could really do to make it that good. And your name not be Steven Spielberg. You know? Not everyone can create a T-Rex that looked as good as that did. It's just the way it was. It was a kid show that got a movie. And they tried to make it a little darker. They still had the fun and lightheartedness. So this does not feel that. It lacks all the fun. It's just sucking. It's a negazone of fun. I will give it credit on one thing, Luke Boy, is that I like the fact that it does have a light up, a bit of a light up thing. No, that's kind of cool. The sound effects is cool. Uh, when you lift it off the ground, when you uh, flip the, the switch on the side and you lift it off the ground, uh, sometimes the sensor activates and there's lights on the bottom of the feet and it sounds like it's lifting off, which is kind of cool. And if you sit it down, it sounds like it's landing. So that's kind of cool. Uh, the wing functionality, I don't like the wings, but the functionality is cool. The hidden blade in the arm, cool. Again, doesn't really scream the Megazord, but it's still cool from a giant robot sense. And it's got a big fuck off gun. The laser gun on the other arm, that's on the back of the Saber Tooth Tiger previously. So again, it's cool in that basic sense for a generically kind of, you know, robot thing, but not for a Megazord. And I do like the fact that it comes with little figures, uh, little rangers that you can put into cockpits. That's kind of cool. We haven't had that in a while, and I can appreciate that. But those are small things for the overall actual toy and the design that it's going to be in the movie. And we, I don't even know those cockpits portions, which was like one on each arm, and then one on each leg, and then the abdomen area opens up, and that's a cockpit too. I don't know if that's going to be the actual cockpits in the movie, and if it's going to be separate cockpits, or if it's going to be one cockpit like they usually have in the show. I don't know what they're going to do here. It just... I, I, I just have no faith in this movie. They've done nothing to give me any reason to have faith in this movie, personally speaking. Ugh. I'm going to move on to a little bit more positive. Uh, let's talk about some Dragon Ball Super. Uh, the 66th episode aired this past weekend, and we got to see what is essentially the main end to the future arc that's been going on there, and we got to see Zamasu go up against Vegito in Super Saiyan Blue, and Vegito is the first time we've seen him since back in the DBZ, and it was really cool to see the fusion. People are up in arms that the Patera fusion have a time limit, apparently, if you're not a Kai. Even though that wasn't established previously, I'm fine with it personally, because I, I, I like there being a weakness to the big, to the big, you know, the big, bad, awesome, good guy. There has to be a weakness, especially when you use, you know, a powered up form like that. Having a drawback helps, and it actually adds urgency. Vegito's awesome, but you know what? I'm glad they actually, you know, gave him you know, a bit of a nerfing in that aspect because these are two of the strongest characters in the story in the series and if they just kind of run you know ramp shot yeah, while it's cool for a little bit it kind of takes away tension and now we know there's a limit they have to do it again and there's, there's tension and that's good we need tension 
and then there's Trunks. Trunks gets to come in for the final blow. And it was pretty epic. It was a bit contrived, sure, like this weird spirit bomb thing kind of forming from the energies of the people that are really behind Trunks and him getting kind of a thing where he could uh, manipulate his key into making a uh, blade for a broken sword. So he's using his key energy to make a sword and he goes up fighting the now mortal Zamasu when he fused with Goku Black. It got it nullified the immortality pretty much. And, you know, you got to see him go around, and they're having a sword fight, an energy sword fight versus energy sword fight. And then, basically, Trunks envelops all this energy into himself, makes the sword in a big-ass fuck-off buster sword, and goes, balls, it's like, slicing from the balls up to the head, and splits Zamasu in half. It was awesome. I was so glad to see Zamasu, uh, Zamasu finally get this come up. It was so because he was such a such an aggravating character in the good way. You loved to hate him. He was powerful, he was intimidating, he was threatening. He was a good character. But you wanted to see him get his come up with you wanted to see him defeated and it be Trunks that does it and not Vegito. And not be Goku or Vegeta individually that does it, that gets the killing blow, that is Trunks was perfect. It was great, and I'm happy they went that route. Uh, Super overall, I've been enjoying because it feels like watching Dragon Ball again. DBZ is important to anime overall. I get that. It really brought around a lot. The big tropes that people have made fun of over the years, but we love. And DBZ had a tendency to kind of drag things out, whereas Dragon Ball, the original version, the original series, was funny and lighthearted and had kind of serious moments, yes, and it was better paced, but it, it just, it was an overall better series to me than DBZ was, and Super feels like it's really calling back to the original Dragon Ball era, you know, and I've, I've been enjoying it, so I'm really excited to see what goes on beyond the future arc. We're still wrapping it up, uh, but it looks like this is the end of the road for uh, the future Trunks story. In all, I don't think we'll be seeing him again. They're probably gonna take the time. They're gonna be taking the time machine back anyway, probably. Uh, Goku, Vegeta, and Bulma back to their time, and that will be the end of that. Probably it'll be destroyed by Beerus or Zeno or whoever. I don't know, but it's going to be the end of Trunks for the future. Finally, we probably won't see him again in the series or in the franchise. Never say never, but I'm just assuming. But I've been enjoying Super. I'm still catching up a little bit. I've been watching on Crunchyroll because I want to watch it from a uh, uh, an official source. So I've not watched. I did not watch pretty much any of it anymore until it got to Crunchyroll. So I'm still missing about 15 episodes or so. I think it's 31 to 46 are the ones I'm still missing. Uh, so, but I will be watching those as they release over the next few weeks to be caught up. But otherwise, I'm completely caught up outside of the weird tournament arc they're about to do between the Universe Seven and Six. Uh, at this point in the story where I'm at. So, yeah, I think they made the right choices in the episode. I'm glad we got to see some Vegito. Maybe they could have cut their next time trailer a little bit differently when they showed off Vegito because it made it seem like he was going to be the big thing and like the main focus, and he kind of wasn't. But I'm glad we saw him. I'm glad Trunks got the kill. I'm glad Zamasu, you know, got his balls split. God, that was so good. So good. But yeah, uh, if you have not been watching Dragon Ball Super, I highly recommend it. It's only in sub right now, uh, so if you're waiting for the dub, you'll be waiting a little while while it has been licensed to Funimation to do the dub, so we'll be seeing uh, all the DBZ cast coming back and reprising their roles for the series. You know, I'm fine with the sub. I've gotten used to, you know, the Japanese voice actors, especially with the uh, Japanese uh, Goku voice actress who has been voicing him for since Dragon Ball. Since he was a kid character. It's been the same woman. Uh, I got used to it. You know, hearing this kind of, you know, it's a female trying to be a male voice. But it matches. It really does to me, and I've gotten used to it. So, I like it. I highly recommend it. Go see it. You can watch it on Crunchyroll, uh, Dice K, or Funimation. Go have fun with it. You won't be disappointed. 
because frankly, there's not a lot of filler, the characters are fun, the writing is good, the stories are interesting. If you've watched the, the recent like uh, Resurrection of Beth or Battle of the Gods movies, you can kind of skip the first couple of arcs. Like the first 20 episodes, for the most part, are those two movies retold, but with some changes. Uh, but if you don't mind going through them again, go ahead and watch them. You'll be disappointed at all. You'll like it. And let's end on a positive note again. Uh, this is mostly an overall positive video, which is good. Only one thing that really aggravated the living shit out of me in the last week or so. So yay! But we're going to talk about Sun and Moon, which releases here in a few days. I can't wait. Um, it's going to be releasing uh, midnight tomorrow night, uh, Thursday night, midnight, Friday morning, midnight, have everyone look at it. Uh, but a lot of places are doing midnight releases, so I will be having my copies of Sun and Moon soon. And the reviews have started coming out as a result of such being you know, so close to the release date. And they're good. I'm actually really happy to hear this. Uh, I'm seeing basically anywhere from 8.5 and up <laughs> on average. Hell, IGN gave Sun and Moon a 9. And the person that did the review was the same person, the same woman that gave uh, Oras, uh, you know, Mega Ruby and Apple Sapphire, for those that don't understand abbreviations. Uh, they gave those games a 7.5, and it was too much water. <laughs> so that, that has been a joke for several years now. The too much water thing from IGN and the 7.5 rating. Uh, but Sun and Moon comes out, which is an island chain, so we were all waiting for the too much water thing again. No, it gets a 9. It gets a nine. Hell froze over. So, cool. Uh, I'm really happy here, personally, that the games are getting such higher praise and such good reviews because this having been such a big departure from the basic formula that has been going on for 20 years while it was definitely be refreshing in its own way it was still a high risk because you had you risk alienating longtime fans and it seems like it didn't do that uh from what i've heard there's some hand holding uh through a good portion of the game and you know what i can deal with that to an extent because I understand that there are still going to be new players coming in every generation. And there's old fans are going to come back in because of Pokemon Go, likely. So a little bit of hand-holding to help them, you know, acclimate to what Pokemon is now compared to what it was 20 years ago is not a bad thing. So I don't mind them doing a bit of hand-holding. But it just sounds like there's so many cool things that they've added in. There's stuff they didn't even talk about that I found out recently because of reviews. Uh, I didn't know that they had changed daycares. They changed the daycare system. Uh, they're no, no longer called daycares, they're called nurseries now. And nurseries no longer, uh, they don't level up in nursery like they did in daycares, that's done. You can level them up on the Poke Pelago if you want that to happen. But if you just want to do breeding, you no longer have to risk losing a good move set for a Pokemon you're breeding for, you know, a shit move that you don't have any control of because the level's up and they just automatically start attributing a move there to a slot. So I think that is a great change. I think it's really cool. And especially for certain friends of mine who are big into breeding, you know, for perfect IVs and the best teams and interesting team combinations. Uh, this was a good change, I think, for them. And they're gonna have fun with this. And I can't believe they didn't talk about that prior. So, yeah, the reviews have been good, and they've been informative, actually. Uh, if I wasn't going to already buy these games, I probably would anyway. Uh, just from the reviews, if they're that good. So, yeah. That's really all I've got. It's just kind of a quick throw-together video talking about, you know, things. we got to talk about anime, video games, Doctor Who, toys, slash movie, and yeah. <laughs> also, before I go... This Friday, when Sentiment releases, is also the uh, opening day for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. And as far as I know, I, I'm still planning on going to see that movie. And that means expect a review, hopefully, if I get to see it. I'm going to try to go opening day on Friday. 
I'm not doing the midnight viewing, obviously, because I'll be busy waiting for the Pokemon games. But I do plan on seeing the movie, if not, if not Friday, then Saturday or Sunday, at least within the next few days. Uh, within the release that re the release period of the opening weekend, I will be going. And uh, from the bits I've seen from the trailers, it looks like it's going to be a good movie. So I'm hoping that's a good movie because I don't like going to see shit movies. It makes my life miserable. So after a good movie like Doctor Strange Ends that I went and saw recently, it'll be nice to see another good movie. After talking about the probably really shit po Power Rangers movie, I need something to clean my palate from that. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter at at Xandros. And, uh, yeah. That's all I've got. So thank you for joining me. As always, my name is Xandros, and until the next video, I'll see you guys then. Later. <laughs>